I got fucking wasted after Vegas. No. <laughs> yeah, I believe you. Now everyone knows they can get a viral clip by bringing in a fucking clown. I'm going to be fucking chased by clowns. It's extremely keen because the children scrub the floors for Master Bert. I got to go to this orphanage. Yeah, for Master Bert. Do they yes. have an app for orphans? Like a swipe right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. 100%. Cheers. We are supported by NASCAR. If you've never checked out NASCAR, make sure you call up your friends, grab some beers, and tune in to the NASCAR Cup Series race on Sunday, April 9th at 7 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Hey guys, brand new episode of Two Bears, One Cave. I'm in the driver's seat. I'm taking control of things, and we are on the West Coast. My guest is a podcaster, a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> what's up, man? Hey, what's going on with you, <laughs> Edit his name out. <laughs> Edit his name out. <sighs> How was last night? It was awesome. Yeah. I put it down. You put it down. Huh? I put it down hard. Yeah. Hard. Yeah. I have fucking I love my wife. You bring this up sometimes. I know. I can't believe how much I love her. <laughs> you, you, you always say how lucky she is. Oh, she's very lucky to have me. Yeah. I'm, I think anyone's lucky to have me. I'm like a fucking awesome. I'm a gra I'm a, You know, I can't believe. I wonder if there are girls. Wouldn't it be cool if there was an app that would, that uh, you could, it's like almost like Facebook, right? Right. But then people could. Just rate how awesome you are? No. And no, they go, they could, it's all the people in your past lives. Oh. Could go, man, I missed out. I should have dated him. Mm. Or I did date him and I fucked it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, wouldn't that be? Dude, that would be kind of. It would be. It would be a nice ego bump. I think. Yeah. And 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 if the if the app filtered out people who were like, "Fuck that guy," he's the worst. Like, just erase those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's only positive ones. I went. Uh, I was in a private jet one time, and I went to. Oh, is that where you were? Yeah, <laughs> okay. and I, was, I went to. Uh, I went to. They all take them. Okay. They all take. Who's them. they? They the fucking liars. The liars. Oh yeah, they're, they are. A lot of liars out there. There's a lot of liars out there. Yeah. You know, I talked to someone one time who's like, I don't know what was the person's accent because yeah. then you'll know exactly who it was. Yeah, yeah. They were like, I'm going to do it really bad because if I did their accent, you'd know who I was talking about. Okay. I don't understand why you pay, post a picture of yourself on a private jet. Mm -hmm. And I went, because I'm on a fucking private jet. I go, regular people, not people who pretend to be regular. Yeah, this is actually starting to almost sway me where the whole thing has always been don't show yourself in those situations. And you go, okay. And now, because I know so many people that pretend. Pretend to be regular men. Yeah, yeah. And they're on those. I'm like, just fucking show it. Just show it. Because you know what a regular person does? Do you know what your dad would do? Your dad, who is a regular person, yeah. would take a picture of himself on a private jet and send it to his friends. And if he knew how to operate Facebook, he'd post right. it on there. It's like, do you ever do it regularly? And then you bring somebody with you who doesn't. And then they just go like, this is awesome. Because it yeah. is an amazing experience. My agent. When we got done Razzle Dazzle, uh, I flew everyone home on a private jet. Yeah. So it was, I thought it was a treat, right? Yeah. Everyone got COVID, but. <laughs> yeah. Cool treat. <laughs> it's a cool treat. Everyone got yeah. COVID. We were all. We got, we got <laughs> monoclonal antibodies at the FBO. Go ahead. <laughs> my, my, my manager ended up in the hospital. Anyway, it was a, it was a treat. Yeah. So, but every one of them, all, yeah. the, all the people that work with me that are all, you know, have always been more successful. We're all taking pictures. Everyone takes picture. It's a natural thing. It is. It's like I if you know. catch a. It's like if you catch a fish and you just go, well, I know I caught it. And you put it back. If it's a yeah. big fish, you it's take a marlin. Fucking, fucking take a picture. It's a fucking marlin. Yeah, I get it. And so I, that's how I, I, I try. If you're going to be a normal person, be a fucking normal person. So wait, what were you just saying though? You said one time I, I was no on. no idea. I was on a private jet and then we stopped to talk about that. But you were telling a story about it. Fuck. <laughs> <clears throat> no? It's gone? I don't know. Okay. I should be getting COVID pretty soon. Why is that? I'm coughing. Why? I don't get it. I don't give a fuck. Okay. Uh, take a week off. Be nice, relax. They should have COVID vacations. So you had great sex. Great sex. Put it down. Put it down. Oh, one time I was about to take a private jet, and I was posting it on the thing, and I went to tag someone, and I my ex girlfriend actually went and the name came up, and I went, I should tag her. Oh right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, my bad. <laughs> I know. I wonder if it's. Uh... I wish I could. I should tag. Girls that I went on a date with, like just for, you know, I dated like a couple times for a month when I was an uh, open micer and I was logging, you know, like logging like videos. Yeah. That's who should be tagged in those things. <laughs> when they're like, this guy's a fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got fucking wasted after Vegas. No. 
Yeah, I believe you. Dude, you had a fucking 32 ounce tequila on stage. I know. I got to stop drinking those. I think I'm going to be sober this weekend. This weekend? Yeah. And like work out and feel good and about myself. Okay. And treat myself. What? What's the treat? To be to wake up and feel oh, good. Oh, and feel good. Yeah, that's, and to, that is a nice treat. Yeah. That's crazy that you think of that as a treat. Well, I look at you. I look at you today, and you look good. You look like healthy. And well, I didn't drink last night. What did you do? Just sit there. Yeah. That didn't feel great though. Oh, well, uh, just sat there. Yeah, I had some rice and I had a uh, uh, chicken. Walk me through this night. Yeah, I had some, <laughs> I had some rotisserie chicken. In your hotel. Yeah. You by yourself out here? Yeah. Your trainer? No, he's not with me now. So you just you by yourself. I'm just by no, myself. No team, Tom. No team, Tom. Alone. Wow, big meetings. I have a couple of meetings. What are you um, gonna do to treat yourself tonight? Um, I don't. I, you know, I'll go to bed at a reasonable hour. Do you want me to plan a prank for you? No. <laughs> Speaking of which, <laughs> should we talk about my Schultz appearance? Yes. <laughs> so. Andrew's good as a, uh, he's, he, he has this real skill. Andrew Schultz we're talking about. We're talking about Andrew Schultz. If you he's, don't know, he's got a podcast called Flagrant. I'm sure it's been out. I, I, yeah. I have not said anything about it, but I, uh, I had, I had, it, was, it was a roller coaster of emotions. He's done this before, by the way, with, I forget, somebody else was coming on that I know, and he, um, this is, this is a, it's a good, it's a clever like producing move yeah. where he'll be like, so and so's coming on. Um, anything, anything to like, bring up anything that, that would be fun to talk about and um and so you kind of go like right. oh this or that and then with you i feel like the, the question was more i thought it was more pointed like is there anything that's like let me i'll even look it up but he asks this right he's like what's any any and you when you realize that when somebody does like this uh this question for their for their show you're like oh this is like this is actually a really effective way to to gain insight that they would otherwise, and it, it doesn't take long to ask this, right? Yeah. So he's like, "What is um, fun, something interesting, funny, weird we can tap into about him?" And I'm like, "Well, he hates." I go, "He hates clowns and balloons," and he's like, "What?" And I go, "He hates them. He hates them." So we go back and forth about it, and I was like, I, and then I go, "If you do the," I tell him. If you do, if you do that at the beginning, you might not have a podcast. So I go. It was, very, it was a very accurate insight. I told him. I go. If you do that at the beginning, you might not have. Did he do the beer thing? Yeah, that's stupid. Okay. Well, I was like, that's I mean, funny. It's, it's a funny, funny concept. It's, it's, it was, it, it, had he just done the beer thing, I think that would have been hilarious. Right, but, but hang on, let me rephrase. And let me tell you. Look, I said balloons. We do that or clowns. I do it near the end if you're going to surprise him. Because he'll get all jittery and not not. I, I tell him. Well, like, you, were, you made a very accurate aside. Yeah. I did not. I did not. Uh, the beer thing was funny. Uh, the beer thing was funny because they they. Well, tell them what opposite. it is. So they he gave me non alcoholic beer and they yeah. all drank non alcoholic beer and I was like, gosh, I I thought like I, I knew he didn't drink, so I was like, what? It's not that like he's <laughs> drinking. So I was like, whatever. They give me non alcoholic beer. In con like if, if you're in a writer's room and they go, Burke Kreischer's coming in. What if we all drank regular beers and gave him? It's a funny, it's a it's very a, funny it's, concept. It, it, it would have been very funny. It was overwhelmed by my reaction to the clowns. Did they, okay, now here's my question. Did, did it happen send early or late? Because I haven't seen it yet. The clowns. Send in the clowns. It happened in the middle of the podcast. Okay. And I shut down. I shut. I mean, I don't know how they've edited it. Is there a reason? I know we've talked I about. Do what, not, I, you don't I, know why you don't. Like I got to be dead honest with you. I don't know why I. I don't know why I behaved the way I did, does, I, and I, I have no control over it. Does a six-year-old Bert Kreischer hate clowns? Like, is I, that, yeah, 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 yeah. I've always hated clowns. I, it's not that unusual. The weird one, for sure, is balloons. Yeah, and I got to be honest with you. The, the, I think the balloons were worse than the clown. For me, it was one clown, right? One clown. It was his. It was his producer, Dove, or his manager, his buddy, Dove. And uh, Dove, I, I, I will tell you. I'm, I'm going to tell you privately, but publicly, I think they felt really horrible because of how much you shut down. <laughs> I shut down, Tom. I, I haven't seen the clip. I was there. I shut down. I was. I was. I was. I was angry, but I also was aware that I was on. I was being filmed, yeah. and there's an enter there is an entertainer part of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even in my worst, like, it, we, and we ended up talking about phobias. I did not know I was going to get this bad. I really didn't. I and I do. I wish I could. I'm really embarrassed of how bad I look, because I. I mean, it is asinine. 
it is asinine that I'm like, I froze, I shut down, I couldn't move. I cannot believe it's this intense. I know. I mean, I, I, I wonder if I should get, I wonder if I should see if Schultz can get us a clip. I bet he's got a clip. Yeah, I'm sure he does. Yeah. The, um, um, I, oh, it's, it's, I think it's better if you, let, yeah, I just go, go to his podcast, go to Flagrant, you can watch it. Uh, we were having a good conversation and he was asking me, he was like, you know, what was it like in the old days doing Rogan? And it's interesting yeah. that all those guys, all those guys, it was, I mean, there's so much to unpack here because what's fascinating to me, a little sidebar, is we all got into podcasting because we hated, we not hated, but we didn't like traditional radio, like morning zoos yeah. and stuff. And then as I'm about to say that, Andrew comes in with a morning zoo prank. Sure. Like it's a tradition. He's, that's and there's tra a group of guys around there. there's a group they're of like, yeah, guys. Yeah, there's yeah. a wacky guy. Yeah, yeah. Like, he can get in the clouds. He's very yeah. clouds. And I was, I was fucking, <laughs> I yeah. was, I was shut down. And I immediately, my first reaction is I want to get out of this room. But I knew there's a camera on me. And I knew I had a special to promote. And I knew that this was a very real thing. And even, and I think it's, it taps into my old travel channel days of even when I was shut down the hardest, I knew that like, okay, here we go. Um, I couldn't, I, I couldn't reel it back in for like 25 minutes. Like I, for 25 minutes, I was like, I didn't talk. I just sat there like rubbing my beard. And I mean, I was like, I was in a different world. I, I was waiting for it to happen Jesus again. Jesus Christ. And I couldn't, and, it, and, and it's, I understand how absolutely silly I look. Because it's so irrational. It's so irrational. And then and then I would argue that we got into a pretty I think, I mean, I don't know. I, I haven't seen the episode, but and from my impression, and this is why I'm cool with it, we got into a pretty great conversation about phobias. Yeah. And about irrational phobias and Do you have other ones? I'll never say them out loud. Well. I will never I will But you do have other irrational phobias? Yes. Oh yeah. I will never I am a number one. I will never do anyone's podcast ever again. I think I'm done. I think I'm going to do this one in mine because <laughs> I was like, I was like, now everyone knows they can get a viral clip by bringing in a fucking clown. I'm going to be fucking chased by clowns. It's going to be like the movie It. Like I was like, I'm, I'll do like the guys I know, but I'm never fucking like the first, first, first. My first thing was I am never doing Logan Paul's podcast. And I wanted to so bad. I yeah. wanted to so bad because yeah. I love. I think he's got a great podcast. I like those guys. Yeah. But I'm, I'm like Logan Paul's way too fucking smart to not bring a fucking clown in the room or a hundred <sighs> clown. You know, Logan That's Paul. That's the thing is, it he, wouldn't be one. It wouldn't be one. And it's gonna be. And 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 the joke now is so funny that if Logan by the way Logan Paul's like I'm, they I had an invite to do his podcast and yeah. I was excited I was really excited I like Prime yeah I, li I him and his brother make me laugh hard as fuck when they're together yeah um I th I, th I think the kid's smart as fucking shit and I was like I was excited to do his podcast but I was like the j the joke now would be he'd be like I definitely am not bringing in a clown and then I go okay and then he's like I brought in clowns like that's yeah. the joke there's 45 clowns like outside. 45 clowns outside yeah <laughs> I won't, I won't be I won't be comfortable doing and, and, and I would feel you, bad because the I, I didn't I would I want I was so out of control I go I'm I'm definitely not, the first thing I first thing I said is it just came to my head I go I'm not doing Logan Paul's podcast and do I, scarier do scary makeup clowns are those worse than you know what I mean like yeah yeah, yeah there's yeah, ones yeah, that yeah. are like evil looking clowns yeah. are those worse yeah 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 I I, I I don't even even thinking about it but the the I, I'm because now I'm thinking about it and I just was like it. It just bothers me, and I don't. I wish I knew why. Like someone said, they have a phobia of cotton balls, and I was like, "Whoa, that's fucking ridiculous." But then mine's just as ridiculous. No, that's cotton balls is more ridiculous. Co <laughs> cotton balls is just a fucking object. What? How does that even? Yeah, I don't know. Well, but balloons is ridiculous. Balloons is ridiculous. And you're like, you don't smell that? Oh, I smelled them the second they got in the room. The second they got in the room, I smelled them. I smelled them immediately, <laughs> and then they fucking let them go up by the light. They were like. This is how callous they were. They brought in the balloons and then let them go. And the balloons, like a fucking balloon, just went everywhere. And they just find the hottest little area. And now I'm waiting for it to pop. And it's unpredictable. And it's just sitting there. And, and the, does the popping bother you? Oh, my God. That's the thing. Really? That's the thing. Uh, uh, that's the. So did you ever get balloons for, like, for the girls when it was their no, birthday? The girls have never had balloons. My daughters have never had balloons. Never. 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 Go to fucking Ralph's. Do you want to get, does your daughter want a balloon? No, she doesn't. Ask me. Don't ask her. Ask me. 
No, she doesn't want a balloon. They're allowed mylar balloons. What's a mylar balloon? It's the the steel ones. Steel. What, whatever. <laughs> it's a Rachel, steel what's a balloon? fucking mylar balloon? Oh, you got Google over here? Oh, fuck yeah. Oh. Yeah. Hold on. Those, those ones. Like the, the oh, those. metallic looking ones. So why is that one okay? I don't know. I think, okay. well, I, think, I think the rubber <laughs> of a balloon. I mean, I remember fucking those really creepy kids that would have a balloon in their mouth and yeah. they'd be blowing it up and let it go back in their mouth and blowing it up and let it go back. I couldn't do whippets when I was a kid. Mm. Like everyone's doing whippets. I'm like, I'm not sucking things out of a fucking balloon. Why were you so good in bed last night, you think? I think it's been a while. Oh, so yeah. it's built up? Yeah, it's been a while. I took my time. Yeah. I wasn't in a rush. Nice. Started with a foot massage. Massage? Massage. 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 No, it's massage. I think it's misspelled massage. There's no D. Massage. No, massage. massage. M -S -M -S massage. It's not massage. How would you, how, okay, how would you pr pronounce, type in another word that's spelled like that. Like P A S S, uh, it's not passage. <laughs> passage. 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 Okay. Passage. Okay. Massage. Yeah. Okay, I'll start. I'll start, I'll start pronouncing it better. Massage. So you're gonna do like a French guy. <laughs> Massage. <laughs> you want the massage? Um, I uh, the I I have so many mm -hmm. balloon nightmares that have happened to me. Balloon nightmares. Yes. Uh, number one. Okay, this is the worst one that's ever happened. This okay. is the worst one. Um. On my 40th birthday, yeah, Leanne was Leanne had been down in. Uh, this is a decade ago. Go ahead. This is a decade ago. Yes, <laughs> Leanne. We were in Australia, and Leanne was there, and then she left. And the the uh, board of tourism for Australia thought they'd surprise me, and fill my room with balloons. Okay. So the entire bedroom is filled. With, the entire bedroom, all on the ceiling, is filled with balloons, and it's like so many balloons that there's they're doubling up on each other. The whole, I mean, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna guesstimate. <laughs> How many balloons do you think would fill up here? Uh, maybe they had 150 balloons in my bedroom. I walk in and I fucking melt down. I melt down and I and I don't know what to do. I call Leanne. I think she is. She was already back in LA. I call Leanne and I fr I'm freaking out. I try to get them into the be bathroom, but the way the ceiling's shaped, they all just end up back into the bedroom. No, okay. with, and they're all on the fucking ceiling. They're all just gathering right above the bed. I go, what do I do? And Leanne's like, okay, pour yourself a really stiff drink, get in that bed, and just pass the fuck out. Like, I, I'm it, I'm melting down. So I murder drink, and I'm just staring at these fucking balloons above me. And I'm just like, oh, my God, this is like the worst night. And the room is just reeks of balloons. At 4 in the morning, all of the helium runs out in all the balloons and at the same fucking time drop and 150 balloons land on my bed on me and they're on the floor and i can't get out i'm like ah! i sat in the fucking lobby i sat in the lobby of the hotel like i, I need someone to fix my room i get it's fucking worse some guy some guy just came up with a, a pin just pop i go no i don't want the air from inside the fucking balloon in my room this episode of two bears one cave is brought to you by nascar the 2023 NASCAR season is in full swing now, with drivers giving it all they've got to lock in a playoff spot. With every race that passes, you can really feel the intensity start to heat up. It's an absolute battle out there on the track week in and week out. And what better place to do battle than at the last great Coliseum, Bristol Motor Speedway. That's right, this week NASCAR is headed to Tennessee for the Bristol Dirt Race. Drivers and teams will have to manage the unique surface on the fly and only the best Will prevail. If you've never checked out NASCAR, make sure you call up your friends, grab some beers, and tune into the NASCAR Cup Series race on Sunday, April 9th at 7 p.m. Eastern on Fox. There's all kinds of things you can do if you're trying to get healthier. I love prioritizing sleep, eating clean, 
getting your workouts in, and of course, you have to hydrate. If you're trying to improve your health, hydration is a great place to start. Liquid IV is the hydration brand that fuels your well-being. Their hydration multiplier is the one product you're missing in your daily routine. In just one stick, you get five essential vitamins and two times faster hydration than water alone. Use it first thing in the morning before a workout, when you feel run down, after a long night out, and on long flights. I take the sticks with me, the packets, I throw them in my backpack. It's the easiest thing to do. You tear it open, you throw it in a bottle of water, and you're good to go. One stick of liquid IV and 16 ounces of water hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone. It contains five essential vitamins, B3, B5, B6, B12, and vitamin C. And with three times the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks and made with premium ingredients. Grab your liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code CAVE at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you shop better hydration today using promo code C-A-V-E at liquidiv.com. You don't understand. Do you see how irrational this is? I do. I do. I do. I do. But you don't have any irrational fears? I guess I do, but they don't, they're not at the, like, at the forefront of my, where I go, like, it's this one. Um, cause most of Claustrophobia? Like, yeah. Uh, fucking, but here's the thing. Also, worse with age. I didn't realize that. People used to say, like, if you said, are you claustrophobic, you know, 10, 15 years ago, I'd be like, nah. And the older I've gotten, the the worse it's gotten. Really? Yeah. And, like, the big one where I, I can deal with it, but I don't fucking like it is, like, an MRI. Those oh. are fucking rough. And so I had one where they go, all right, we're going to do this thing with your knee or whatever. And so just lay down and I go, feet first. And he goes, well, actually we could do head first. Or I go, no, we're not, we're not going to do head first because my fucking knee. <laughs> so you can, you can look at it this way. We'll do fucking feet first. And he's like, okay. So we did that. I love, I, by the way, I know this energy. Yeah. It's the same energy when the, when the, we did the, when we did the dominatrix and they go, Hey Tom, put on a speedo. And you go, no. And they go, no, Tom, put on a speedo. And you go, no. And they go, Tom, put on a speedo. And you go, I'm actually not telling you no. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not asking you. I'm not yeah. asking you. I'm explaining to you. This will not happen. So stop asking. I love when you do that. <laughs> So I did, yeah, so that, but then I had to do one for my AC joint once, and that was head first. And that, that ceiling of the MRI is like, it's like not even an inch from your nose. Mm. So I put on the, they give you eye mask and uh, earplugs so that you can like basically try and you have to like take yourself. I mean, it's right here. If you, you can't go like this. That's a tight space. You want to know? You want to uh, that shit pan? That made me panic. Uh, I, 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 when I had surgery on my elbow, I'm gonna turn my fucking phone. When I had surgery on my elbow, I had yeah. to put my arm in an MRI, just my arm. Yeah. But I couldn't move it for like whatever. What is it? Twenty five minutes or something? Yeah. And if you move it, it starts all over. That was that was panic inducing. Yeah. Kale, uh, you know Kale. Yeah, yeah. Kale got COVID back <coughs> in the day in Budapest. I hope he's cool with me telling that story. Yeah. <laughs> he got COVID. So they were like, hey, uh, he, he, we need to get you back to the United States. He's like, cool. And they're like, we can get, get you, but you have to, you're going to um, be put in a bubble, a, a glass bubble in a plane so that they'll put you in the bubble. Then they'll put you on the plane in the bubble and uh, fly you 14 hours home. He was like, you're out of your fucking mind. You're going to put me in a glass bubble, like an MRI machine. In a plane? In a plane and fly him home. And he was like, ah, oh, I'll die from COVID. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. But the cluster, it has gotten worse. You know, yeah. it's not, I oh, mean, yeah. tight, tight spaces, small elevators. Ooh. The worst is um, any type of passage. You know, like you're like in an old a building. Passage? Uh, a passage uh, <laughs> where like, there's like a, a small, like an old building. They go just like sneak through this narrow. No. Or if I even watch those cave divers that sneak through those, <laughs> just, I can't even watch the videos, the videos of the guys, of the guys where their arms head is stuck. We were, this is what we talked about on Schultz's podcast. It was an interesting conversation. Yeah. That, that, that is panic inducing spelunking dude. Uh, the, I've been spelunking before. That is fucking terrifying. Terrifying. See, see, type in Burt Kreischer spelunking. But that doesn't that doesn't up. register to me as an irrational fear. 
You yeah, know, no, being, not... being a, in a tight space like that. That's crazy. Yeah. You type in Burt Kreiser spelunking, nothing comes up. I've been spelunking a lot. I was, I've been spelunking a great amount of times. It's such a crazy sentence that you just said. <laughs> I have been spelunking a great amount of times. I sound, I sound like Ellis. It's, it's, yeah, it sounds like a kid learning to speak. <laughs> I sound like a, a weird, I guess you can't put Burt Kreiser in caves because it comes up two bears, one cave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> By the way, I did that bit on stage. What? Remember we when we were at the Vegas show? Oh yeah, it killed. It, it should. Killed. Yeah. God, I'm so jealous. You have a family. What are you talking about? You have a family. Yeah, but they're done. They're done. You're just getting all the meat of the material right now. Yeah. If I were you, I'd record everything. I'd put cameras in his room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Isla, Isla was fucking so. She used to be so goddamn funny, and now she'll bite her tongue and she won't say shit in front of me. Yeah. Like she, what did she say the other day that had us howling, laughing in New York? Oh, we were crying, crying, laughing. Yeah. She goes, "Oh, I found my retainer," and so she opens her retainer. She goes, "Oh, there it is, great little case." And Pete's like, "What is that on your retainer? Like the the plastic?" And she goes, "It's a Mexican flag." She, he goes, why do you have the Mexican flag? She goes, I panicked. <laughs> he goes, what? They, they were asking me what color I wanted my retainer. And she goes, I just put it in the Mexican flag. And they were like, you want the Mexican flag? And the woman who was doing it was Mexican. And Isla didn't, was then embarrassed because she picked the Mexican flag. So now Isla's retainer is the Mexican flag. <laughs> It's so fucking weird. It's on the top and the bottom. It's the Mexican fucking flag. And we were like, she panicked. Pointed to the Mexican one. And then the Mexican woman goes, you want the Mexican flag? And she didn't want to be like, no. no. <laughs> oh, That's we were crying laughing. Oh, oh, my God. I got a call that um, Ellis is obsessed with his iPad. We have to, we have to. <laughs> say eyeballs. His eyeballs, too. <laughs> but he has, he's obsessed with it. So we have to, like, you know like ration the time like you can't be on it all day yeah. and he plays video and he, he loves it he's a fucking obsessed so we, we take but anyways he's always like hey um you know for this game i gotta to upgrade the thing i have to buy uh you know like a whatever access to it yeah so we try to you know parent when he can do it so he, ha he has this game where they, they he wants to buy a block of something it's like 25 bucks or something so christina was like i don't want to just be like yeah you know we should make him like earn it i'm like yeah i go let me talk to him so i was like i go what's up he's like all right this thing's like 25 bucks <laughs> he's like i think i should have to you know like do chores and stuff i go yeah that's cool and he goes how long <laughs> like how long until i can get it i go um he goes how about two weeks and i go that seems fair and then she gives he gives the phone back to her she goes he doesn't understand how long two weeks is <laughs> 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 it's uh, just a word for it's him. just a word and i was like what well, i know, I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's just a word about he just, he just heard it he's just heard it yeah so i was like no he she <laughs> goes <laughs> yeah. so i was like i go you sure she goes he definitely doesn't i go yeah, he doesn't. Like. He doesn't. So he gets back the phone. I go, he goes, "How many days is two weeks?" I go, "It's 14. He goes, "That's a long time." I go, "How about one week?" He goes, "How many days is that?" He doesn't know what a week is. I go, "It's seven days." He's like, "No." I was like. <laughs> I was like, all right, how about four days? How many days are 14? What the fuck? Why would they make it such a short thing if it's so long? It's so long. Oh. Yeah. Oh. oh, shit. Oh, fuck. I wish I had that in my life. Uh, yeah. So I we, fucking yeah, love we it. settled on four days. <laughs> uh, how about two weeks? Yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. That seem pretty fucking measured, Ellis. Yeah. yeah. It's I'm like, impressed. Yeah, your, your discipline is wild, dude. Has it been two weeks yet? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, it's been fucking eight seconds. <laughs> Tell me what two weeks since your watch. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh. oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. That's so good. Oh, I know. Oh, I should adopt a kid. <laughs> I should adopt a fucking kid. Can you imagine if you had a kid right now? I want one. You do? I want one so bad. Boy now, right? 
Enough girls. I do another girl. You do another girl? I easily do another girl. Okay. I do another girl and uh I said to the other I said the other day I'm really bummed we didn't have a third. Black? No. Oh, I just mean like yeah, yeah, a, yeah. a different kid. <laughs> I would I would love. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I should maybe I should adopt a kid. Asian? I don't I can't I, I can't adopt any girls. Wait, we just said I know I'd adopt a boy. If I'm going to adopt, I'm going to do a boy. Because you made girls. Yeah, because I made girls. Got you. Yeah. I don't need that shit in my life. I'd adopt a boy. Oh, my God. What if he was just like you? I would love that. I should go to a fucking, I should go to an orphanage and uh, yeah. and see if I can. Do they have orphanages still? Yeah. Really? Type in the they do. nearest orphanage. Oh, I wonder if I can yelp it. <laughs> Look. Oh, they're Orf- all over yeah. the fucking place. Yeah. Oh, bro. Holy shit. It's extremely clean because the children scrub the floors for Master Bert. <laughs> That's real. <laughs> for Master Bert. Wait. Yeah. Hold on. I got to go to this orphanage. Yeah. It's that, right that, that, hold on. This is a bit. Is this a fucking bit? No. That's, who the fuck did that? Los Angeles Orphan Home. It's extremely clean because the children scrub the floors for Master Bert. Did you just type that in? Can you click that now? Click that. Go to the Los Angeles Orphan <laughs> Home. How is that even fucking possible? The kids oh are sweet. God. Bert is their master. Wow. Bert is their master? Wait, yeah. what is this? How, how do I go? I love how you think it was set up for you. I know, but I'm going to show up and they'll be like, he's here. Yeah. <laughs> master Bert. Oh, I don't, it's probably Latino kids. Would you like to relate, raise a Latino boy? Oh, a couple middle infielders? Fuck yeah. yes. Yes. Dude, two Latino brothers. Yeah. I should do brothers. That'd be cool. So I get, that are getting split up and I'll put them back together. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what I would thing. do. I'd be cool as fuck. God, they'd love my life with me. Yeah. Take them on the road. Yeah. Keep them in the tour bus. And they're just always pitching and like oh, playing fuck. catch. Oh, do you know how much I would love... A fucking two brothers. Two brothers. What are they like, like pitcher and catcher, you know? And uh, I could just have fucking play baseball with them all the time. Yeah. I get fucking, I should get seven. We'll do it and start a team. That's a big commitment. Really seven good. sons. I could afford it. You could. I get a fucking, I get fucking nannies. Yeah. Yeah. You get a team of nannies. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, why don't I do this? I could, have, I could, I could click on the orphan, see if they got any, did like pictures of them. I don't think they do that. They okay. should. I know, but they'll, they don't publicize pics of children, you know? Oh, yeah, that would be. But you could go there and probably be like, you, yes, you, no. Do they yes. have an app for orphans? Like a swipe right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. I got to go drop off some fucking baseball gear to these kids. Yeah. Let's, let's set that up. Can we set that or up, Rachel? football, you know? Oh, f- oh, I'll drop off a bunch of soccer balls. Yeah, they would like that. Um, I Yeah, that, wh- let's, let's drop off some fucking uh, some stuff to Los Angeles Orphan Home. Like let's do, like let's go to fucking <laughs> Big Five. Oh. oh, look at these fucking kids! Yeah, they got a dog. They just dude. Run. This is like in the fucking movie. Yeah, the one I was in. I, I was someone, in the, uh, yeah. Someone, yeah. Uh, someone's like, uh, someone was telling me about that. Uh, fuck. They were like, they're like, yeah, Tom was in a movie. I was like, yeah, what was the? I forget what I called the movie. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you called it something cool. <laughs> like, I, yeah. yeah, the one where uh, let's get those. You like kids. take these kids or something? Get yeah. those kids or something yeah. with Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, I bet I could. I bet I could fucking. Uh, what am I thinking? I do with a bunch of fucking equipment. Drop off equipment to them. Do it. They'll be, they'll be so happy. Oh yeah, but I don't. I here's the thing. So like, okay, so we're talking about regular people. Famous people trying to be regular people, right? Mm-hmm. So when they think, uh, if I just don't tell anyone I fly private, then now I'm a regular person. Right. I, I give the illusion of that being I'm regular relatable. Yeah. yeah, that I'm relatable. Um, I have the same problem with uh, charity. Like, I, I feel like, obviously, okay, I'm going to be very honest, so you can't judge me. Okay. I want to drop off the gear personally because I want to see the look in their faces when they get all cool shit. Yeah. That, I, that's why I want to do it. Yeah. But then it, the optics look like I'm doing it so people see me do it. Right. So I don't like, because I don't really give a fuck for anyone to see me do it. They don't it. have to see you do it. 
But I want to. But when you give presents, the best part of giving a present is, is seeing the face. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm doing it selfishly. Yes. I'm actually. I mean, like the selfish part is I just want to be. I want. I want someone to go be like, oh, shut the fuck up. That's what I. And I want that feeling. Yeah. But it looks like now. It looks like. Uh, let's get in touch with them, Rachel, and just see if there's anything I can do to help out. So, because they may be like, hey, can you just not drop off? A bunch of fucking equipment. They could, they're not everyone's into sports. How about a fucking couple iPads? And I'm like, well, well there's a price point on this. Yeah. You got a fucking couple of footballs is one thing. <laughs> fucking some earbuds and an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking, I'm not going to break the bank here. They're, they're like, hey, can you, can you drop off that gold post? Yeah. That, uh, <laughs> you need to practice. This kid's got a real leg on him. <laughs> That's, That's a, horrible. That's uh, it's a horrible. It's, to even joke about it, it's horrible to not. Can you imagine? Just not having your parents? No, it's it's horrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. Or being feeling like not just that you don't have them, that that they were just like we don't want you. That's the horrible part. Somebody's like, Ugh. just drop them off there. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's different. I'm not saying that that's the only reason people are orphans. Sometimes I didn't think they were still orphans. I thought I, I really honestly didn't think they were still orphans. No, no, no. But I mean, like sometimes it's you know sometimes it's neglect. Sometimes you know it's because of drugs. Sometimes it's war torn nation it's political like there's all types of reasons why it can happen but it's it's still devastating yeah it's funny uh let's go back to charity though so okay. you're fucking balling out of control what charities are you looking to donate to uh mike probiglia said threw me off with a question he goes name a nonprofit," and i go is this a quiz i don't know what a nonprofit is yeah i like i don't, I don't <laughs> even know what saint jude is always my team but uh but then, uh, then I tried to donate to them, and they didn't want my money. What? Yeah. What I, do you mean? So I, I was doing. Uh, I forget how this goes down. I was doing waitstaff raffle. Yeah, I remember that. And I had to, and I, and I, it may it may be tapped into to when I first started doing it in theaters. I think. But I had this money, and I said, well, I want to give it to a good place. I'm going to give it to St. Jude's. And they said, no, thanks. It comes from alcohol. People that drink, we don't want your money. Seriously? Yeah. And I, and I was bummed. And then I did Guy's Grocery Games, uh, donated the money to St. Jude. And like, not that I need a thank you, but never heard. Yeah. They were, I, and, and what sucks is I wear St. Jude around my neck. Yeah. It's my, it's my patron saint. It's my saint of, patron saint of hopeless cases. And so pull up all the saints. I'm curious what other saints I could get into. Yeah, what kind of, what saints I could get into? I got I, I got type in the saint of comedy. The patron saint of comedy, I got him on my neck. Saint Lawrence. That's he's there too? This is Saint Lawrence. Wow. This is Saint Christopher. He's for travelers. And this is Jesus Christ, man. Saint Jude and then JC. But yeah, but so like I was Saint Jude kind of I mean You have Jay Z on there? We are supported by Black Buffalo. I'm a tobacco guy. I'm a big chew tobacco guy. I mean, all growing up, that's all I ever did. I don't know if I've ever had a conversation. I have no. I can tell you right now, there's 10 dudes I've never talked to and had deep conversations without a dip in my mouth. If you're 21 and over and you dip or chew pouches or long cut, check out award-winning tobacco alternative, Black Buffalo. Black Buffalo is everything you love, nothing you don't. The feel, the taste, the ritual, just without the actual tobacco leaf or stem. Black Buffalo is actually made from a variety of green leaves in the cabbage family. You take pride in what you do. Take pride in what you dip. Honor your rituals with Black Buffalo. Black Buffalo makes all the best flavors like wintergreen, mint, straight, peach, even blood orange, and without pharmaceutical-grade nicotine. You can buy Black Buffalo online at blackbuffalo.com, but don't forget to use our promo code to the number two bears. For 15% off your first order. You can also buy Black Buffalo at thousands of retail locations like AMPM across the country by checking out their store locator on their website. I'm telling you right now, if you're a tobacco guy like me and you are 21 and over and use products like this, it's time to join the Black Buffalo herd. Head to blackbuffalo.com and use the promo code 2BEARS at checkout for 15% off your first order. Use my code, the number 2 bears for 15 percent off your first order one last time that's promo code two bears for 15 percent off your order warning this product contains nicotine nicotine is an addictive chemical jc jc oh. um i i <clears throat> we gotta get you a saint yeah i don't have a saint how about the saint 
of of what's like what define okay what do you need the most like what's the thing where you go like i'm losing my shit or i'm like uh yeah like for me i always felt hopeless like at times i'd be like there's especially when i got on into saint jude yeah i was in a, going through a period where i was like i was having ocd really bad i could not i was really fucking i was in a bad place it was right when i moved to new york before i got into stand up like that little period and i was just i was a fucking shit show and then my grandmother gave me this St. Jude medal and said, do you know about St. Jude? And I said, no. She goes, he's a patron saint of hopeless cases. If you're feeling lost, like you're like, there's no way out, pray to St. Jude. He'll, he'll help you out. He'll figure it out. And I did. And I, and I figured it out. And within like six months, I had to deal with Will Smith. Yeah. And, and, I'm, and I was saying prayers to St. Jude every day. And I was like, all right, that's my guy. That's when he tried to fuck you, right? He, that's Yeah. I wonder if he's heard that story. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, so what? Let's find you a, a patron saint. Yeah, finding a good patron saint would be good. Saint Hippo. Okay. Saint Augustine. Uh, what's it for? Augustine, like the original. Augustine shaped the the doctrine of the church, including our understanding of concepts like the original sin and grace, and he has influenced countless seekers over the years through his spiritual classic, the Confessions. Ooh, is there a patron saint of nice cars? Stop. T- patron saint of cars. There's See, no saint of cars. Of transportation. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Chris and Chris. Oh, St. Christopher's traveling. Traveling, yeah. <clears throat> um, what about patron saint of uh of Louis Vuitton? Stop. P- patron saint of how about the patron saint of, of weight loss? There's you she wrote in patron saint of luxury goods. <laughs> I don't have Louis Vuitton. <laughs> what, shirt, what kind of shirt is that one you're wearing? It's fucking Zania. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. It's Italian. Pedro Saint of Healing. That's you. Healing? Oh, that would be a good one. Yeah. Who, who's that? Patron Saint of... Asthma? Asthma? Yeah. The Patron Saint of Asthma. It's saint- no, the Healing one would be good. Is there a Patron Saint of Healing? Back pain? For, oh, wow. These are all for Healing. I got you. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, look. All right, hold on. This is actually kind of good. So you have, um, I just saw one there. Anxiety, well, anxiety, autism, and depression is Saint, what is that? Dymphna? Um, bone disease, broken pelvis. Oh, broken bones. That should be me. Yeah, what's your pain saint? Saint, saint what the fuck? Stanislaus Koska? Okay. Let's see if they have a medal for him. Um, keep going down. Ooh. These are a lot. Is that fucking cramps? Are these really the real saints? Cysts? Diabetes? I don't think I would want to be like, hey, I've got a lot of cysts. Who should I? During um, difficult labor? Ear problems? Is that a real Saint official? Polycarp? That's that's how the church. You have ear problems? <laughs> Get St. Polycarp here. Uh, Eye disease? Pac- swelling? <laughs> Ooh. Gout. My dad's got that. Fainting. Hey, does he? Yeah. That's the rich man. It's the king's disease, man. Yeah. He's got gout. Let, dude, Saint Impossible Causes. That's that's me, Saint Jude Thaddeus. Uh, hemorrhages, insomnia, Saint Intestinal Illness, Saint Saint Kidney Disease, Job Related kidney. Stress, Saint. I don't even want to read. I don't. Even, I'm going to think this I'm fucking so Ill. Many. obesity. Oh, Saint. Yeah, Saint Bernard. Pain, suffering, healing, poisoning, Saint Benedict, paralysis. Jesus. Seasick. All right. I'm tapped out. This is too much. Strokes and high blood pressure. I like the stress and anxiety. St. Dymphna. St. Dymphna. Can you you find? Yeah. Who's this? Christian saint honored in Catholic. Okay. That's good. She's beautiful. She lived in the 7th century, was martyred by her father. The story of Dymphna was first recorded in the 13th century. She was murdered by her father? Um, No. Her fat ankles. She was... Crown, sword, lily, lamp. Um, we hit her her wiki. Let's just see what what the story is with her Ooh. story. Okay. Uh, she was Sport. fourteen. She consecrated herself to Christ. Took a vow of chastity. Shortly thereafter, her mother died. Uh, Damon had loved his wife deeply, and in the aftermath of her death, her mental health sharply deteriorated. Okay. So this is like the the mental health thing. Oh. Oh. Uh, after searching fruitlessly, Damon began to desire his daughter because of her strong resemblance to her mother. Oh, so her dad. Oh, my God. Her dad was a real, to fuck her? Yeah, it was a real creeper. Ooh. 
And when Dimsna learned of her father's intentions, she swore to uphold her vows and lied and li oh, fled his court along with her confessor. Uh, two trusted servants and the king's fool. Together they sailed towards the continent, eventually landing what, what is present day Belgium, where they took refuge in the town of Gil. Okay. Um, she built a hospice for the poor and the sick of the region. Man, good person. All right. Yeah. Well, okay. How about this? Ready? I got a better yeah. idea. Good. What if we become saints? I think someone has to, like, the church has to canonize yeah, us. Yeah, we'll, we'll start the ball rolling, but we got to tell them, like, what what will be the saint of? Like, people pray to Saint Bert. Yeah. What for, are they for them when they're really hungover and they don't want to go to work? Yeah. The patron saint of recovery. Okay. Yeah, and so I, they, yeah, and then what's you, what's yours? When they want to uh, uh, to not do something fun and just sit in a room. <laughs> Paper say to Tom. Yeah. Where they just, where they, where they like, I'm just going to. You know what rice. it is? Because it's, it's when they go, I really, I want the strength to go home. That's what it is. I want the strength to go home. Who yeah. do I pray to? I want to leave this situation. So if you're in a relationship and you're having a fun, your husband's having a good time at the party and you're like, I just want to go home. You can, you pray, say a prayer to St. Tom and then your husband will be like, I'm getting, I don't think we should get out of here. And you're like, yeah, thank you, St. Tom. Thank you, St. Tom. Yeah. And then the next morning when you're hung over as fuck, you're like, oh, thank God we prayed to St. Tom, but now we got to pray to St. Bert to get over this shit. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then you can get up and you can, you can, there's going to be a day. It's not, it's not going to work for me. I've been thinking about that lately. Yeah. It's cause it's, 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 I mean, I, I went in New York, I was going so hard all night long and then I would wake up, I was waking up at six in the morning. I ran two miles, still drunk from the night before. Why were you? Why were you going so hard in New York? I don't know. I'm gonna fucking clean my life. Where up. were you doing it? Uh, well, I was doing press all day long. Right. So that's what I'm saying. When the press is over, where'd, where'd <clears> you, you go? go? Out to dinner. Oh, and drink you drink there. Yeah, drink dinner, and then uh, go out, run into the city. Go. Uh, we d and we did Shane Torres a special. We went pretty hard that night. I'm just shocked at how many people are doing coke these days. Did he? Oh uh, yeah, coke's really on the upright. Did he just yeah. shoot two? He shot two. Yeah. He was he did he was great. Good. He was he was and then you know you forget <clears throat> not uh not that how many specials have you done six? Uh I think five. Okay. I'm just this was my fifth. You don't get numb to it, but you you it it, it just is part so much part of the job. Can that, I tell you one thing I didn't like? Please. What, having so many options from shooting the the four. For real? Yeah, it's too many options. Oh wow! No, it it's comforting when you're shooting. Yeah. In post, you're like, you mean to look at four of these right now? I I you know, I introduce you to Dave. Yeah. I just have him do it. Yeah. I I trust him. He did he did all the other ones, and he would be like, he uh he just edits one all together, and it's the best one he thinks. He tells you what show he thinks is best. Yeah. And uh, and you can tell it. it. You can tell it in the in the edit. So, oh, Jeff Tomzik. I'm sorry, Jeff Tomzik's like. I think we need to use Antonio Hernandez. Like, I think we need to use the fourth show. Fourth show is the best. But you can, you can tell in the room. It's funny. Shane did too. And the first one he murdered. The second one, there was something in his eyes where you go, oh, he's having fun. And that's what you and and Leanne was fucking. Leanne Leanne produced the whole thing she was in the back i'd never i'd never been in a in a in a video village when a special's yeah. being taped i've yeah. never been there yeah and so i'm watching it <clears throat> they're doing a line cut as they go and leanne's going yes yes like really excited because he's killing it and i was like do you do this for mine and she goes oh i'm a hundred times worse and i was like really and so then they have footage of in the of the green room because we did all the bts for razzle dazzle which will yeah. come out soon and i watched the footage and leanne leanne like is like that's what get, get, keep going keep going yes 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 Just, it's really fun yeah yeah but shane was uh shane murdered it and then uh i don't know what we're gonna do with it i i i wanted him to own it uh that was my thing i wanted him to own it and i didn't want my thumbprint on it i wanted it to be his special yeah I, I, nothing wrong with when you know Nothing wrong with a comedian helping their friends out. Like Amy's had to do it a couple of times. She did it for Mark. Nothing wrong with that. But I didn't like, I never, I, I, it always, the real gift you can give a friend is just to give them a special. Sure. Just say, hey, there, there you go. And then you can do whatever you want with it. And then you own it. But I'm going to help him try to sell it somewhere or just put it on YouTube. I think YouTube is such a I think YouTube is such a, makes so much sense. It makes so much sense. The only, yeah. only problem is he only has 640 YouTube followers. Well, they don't put it on his channel. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, 
put it on. I guess I'll put it on mine. Well, that's the, that's the thing. We've we've talked to a couple of comics about doing that. Really? Yeah. You should. Yeah. Who would you do? Uh, there's a couple people I want to do. I want to do Tate. Um, oh, that's a no brainer. Yeah. yeah. I want to do Potter. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I even like I even talked before they shot them because they're so good too, and I, I think, and I'm happy that they figured out. But I wanted to do one with Simpson, Brian Simpson. I even talked to Shane before he had his. I was like, Gillis? I was like, I'll produce. I'll do whatever. Uh, uh, I'll I'll do whatever to yeah. to work because I was such a fan of his stuff. Yeah, you and Shane Gillis are combustible. Yeah, that would be a fun guest bear. I, I'll do it. I'll definitely do it. I'd yeah, love he's it. he is he is so. You and him are so kind of similar. Like he likes to be alone. Uh-huh. Like even like when we go to the do the big parties and stuff. Yeah, you can tell like <clears throat> he's he 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 can't. He doesn't have the the bandwidth to give everyone everything all the time. Yeah, he needs to like like when he when we were in the house for the Super Bowl, he'd lock his door. Yeah, that's the Tom Segura move right there. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. Yeah, <laughs> he'd go to his room, he locked the door, and no one could get him out. That's pretty accurate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's exactly. What comedians do you think I'm like? That you're like? Yeah, like like you and Shane have so. I mean, I've, and I've spent so much time with Shane recently that there's so many similarities. I go. I go. I keep. I've said it to you a number of times. You guys need to. Yeah, you have. Um, Pete Davidson. The big dick energy. Yeah, I'd love to see his dick. Yeah, you can kind of see it in certain pants. I think. Um, uh, you you have to have that build too. You know, he's got that long, lean build. Yeah, my my sh- my. I'm too fat. Oh my god! Whoa, 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 whoa! Let me see the second one here. What the Wait, second? In the see. underwear. Jesus. Let me see. Right. Which one? The second from the left. Second from the left. left. That right there. One. Yeah, that one. Oh, sorry. His dick looks pretty good. Did I just, is there a thing online now? I just, like, I was on a plane, so I didn't really get to dive into it. Of Machine Gun Kelly uh, confronting Sam Tripoli. Oh, I heard about that. That, what is that? Is that for real? This is real. I think I saw this on Instagram. Yeah, maybe from that. Wait, that what he, happened? It's um. Fucking triple, go to go triple, to his actual page. Triple E's fucking Instagram, Big Pharma. I fucking love Sam Triple E so much. No, it's uh, not, I doubt Machine Gun Kelly's trip, gonna Yeah, post go to Triple. Scroll down Why a little bit. Machine Gun Kelly. I've heard. I heard something about this, but I don't know what happened. There you go. That's Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah, this might be it. Um, do we have, can we put on these yeah. cans? Okay. I don't have any. Do we have audio in this? television okay the ass is like a phoenix yeah the emo link from legend of zelda yeah now he's picking fights with comedians yeah apparently sam tripoli made a joke about posers or something and he got all insecure about it of course he thought it was about him he gets so butthurt he goes backstage to confront the comedian about a joke could you believe this There's video of this. machine gun kelly comes backstage he's angry at me yeah, yeah and he's about to talk mad shit to me Yeah, how does that conversation go? You do realize I rose from the ashes like a phoenix, right? Like, if you knew that, you probably wouldn't have made those jokes about me. He goes, you're talking shit about me, dog. You're talking shit. Could you imagine being in a headspace where you go to a comedy show, get so so offended by the jokes that you go backstage to confront the comedian about it? I'm pretty sure if you surveyed the world, To name the top five type of people nobody likes. It would include people like this who complain about comedians. I'm at first going, is this a joke? I mean, who would even take this guy serious? Aside from Jaden Smith, who apparently acquired fashion advice from him. Look at him, wearing an emergency thermal blanket. With his little pocketbook. What is that? Apparently the goon performed at a Super Bowl party too. He said he got electrocuted on stage. Eh, at least God's trying, you know. What are these people? What What story are you telling us with this amazing look tonight, Mr. Kelly? Um, Rose from the ashes like a phoenix. Okay. Okay. So I don't know that we get the full story from that, but what we do get is that uh, a a very famous guy who's in the, hears a joke and goes backstage. What could the joke have been? I mean, he apparently thought he was being mocked by him, but like just, just to think that the move is to go up to a comic and be like talking shit about me. First of all, I think to pull that off effectively, you have to be a terrifying person. Do you know what I mean? Like if, if you made a joke about, I don't know, 
like Mike Tyson. I would never make a joke about Mike Tyson. You know what I mean? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. There's or, certain people I don't. There's certain would, people yeah. who like if they go, "Are you talking shit about me, fuckhead?" That you'd be like, "This is oh my god." But for like a pop singer type of dude, is, well, hold on. Is Machine Gun? I mean, I'm being dead serious when I'm asking this. Is he a tough guy? Is, no. You don't think so? No. I don't well, think he grew so. up in Cleveland. Yeah, I don't. I, don't think, I wouldn't. I wouldn't um, label him as that. Six foot four, 180 pounds. I'm not trashing him. I'm just saying yeah. this is not a a dude that you'd be like, oh my god, I'm gonna run for my life. Um, you know, he lifts weights. Sure, 180 pounds. But this is not the person that's gonna. Also, if you're in the limelight like this, you get made fun of. That's part of the yeah, exchange. Yeah, he lives next. He lives like he lives like right there. Really? Yeah. But we look, we get made fun of. You know, like that's yeah. part of it's oh, yeah. part of the territory. Like it just comes with it. It's just crazy. There's not one person that I would, and I've I've seen uh, I've I've seen some pretty uh, I've I've read nasty things about me. I would never approach anyone. I just go, all right, I got it. Yeah, I get it. I look in the mirror too. It's an exchange. Yeah, I get it. Like I, I there was uh, um, I got I got cocky and I did an Instagram live. I don't, I don't normally do those a lot, and I was reading the replies. And, uh, oh, dude, did you, did you know that I, I, there was one where I said the N word? What? <laughs> what are you talking about? I was fucking, we're doing a, an Instagram live to announce the trailer of the movie. Yeah. And someone's like, hey man, can you wish my buddy happy birthday? His name is N-I-C-K-G-U-R-R. Like that's his first and last name. Yeah. And, and, uh. <laughs> That is a real guy's name. <laughs> That's a real dude? No way. Oh. oh. Well, I guess he kind of got lucky with that. Uh, um, and so and I, so I said it. I, I said, hey, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Nick. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and immediately I'm like, and by the way, Sony's on this. Legendary's on this. Yeah. My agents are on this. It's a live thing to announce the trailer's going live. And I fucking, I was like, and but you can't. Here's the thing, I couldn't help but laugh. That's, by the way, this is a different story. This is a different story, yeah. Than, than what you're, like, I thought you were like, I just had a lapse and it snuck out, you know, it was no, like no, one of those no, days. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was just in a mood. But you just got tricked got by tricked wordplay. It's a little different. Yeah, uh, but, uh, <laughs> I was like, get a text from Kale. Hey, uh, easy on the yeah, end box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got tricked. I was I I it was funny that I think you know how sometimes good. you don't get a lot of sleep and <laughs> shit just comes out. <laughs> uh, there's a there was a comic who said uh, his joke. I won't say the comic's name, but you can figure out who it is. If you Google the joke, he was like, you know, uh, they say you can't say the n word. And he goes, what? It's kind of crazy. What are you supposed to do when you hit your finger with a hammer? And I was like, huh? He's like, yeah, it's a word you say. When you, whenever you hit your finger, I go, that's the last. <laughs> I've never, I've never once thought of that word when I hit my hammer. Fucking two weeks later, I'm nailing something in and I hit my finger with a hammer. And the first word that goes in my head, I go, that motherfucker planted that there. He planted it in your head. He planted it there. Yeah. He's a, he was a big Bob, Bob and Tom guy. Oh, really? Yeah. He's a funny fucking, he's a, he's a really talented comedian. Dead? I don't know. Google him. Edit his name out. Oh, I know what happened to this guy. Oh, that's not him. No, that's who you're thinking of, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. What's is he dead? No, I heard some stories about this person that I I should probably tell you. Whoa, he's, he's off a... off camera. Wait, what? What happened to him? Um, I don't know, man. I'll tell you later. Really? I just heard stories. Is it bad? Know. Yeah, it wasn't good. Okay, well. Anyway, well, thank you. Fucking guy, yeah, fucking guy, <laughs> fucking guy. So, what comic? What comic would you say I'm like? Well, that's the thing is like you're so. It stands out so much. Like, there's actually I'm I'm bas I'm an introvert basically, right? So like, I like I I can I'm, I'm an extrovert in situations. Like, I'm an extrovert on stage. I'm an extrovert performing, but off stage I'm I'm really not. Yeah, right? but you are an extrovert to the max so i immediately just think of who has the biggest like you only remind me of people who are like like 
a fucking firecracker going off when they walk into a room. Because the- what's interesting is you'd think you uh, you would imagine that me and Dane, based on Dane's act, yeah. are very similar. And we're really different dudes. Yeah, he's he's he's, he's is, an introvert. He's more introverted for sure off stage. Um, who, oh, by the way, I gotta I gotta finish this because I don't know if I put closure on the Schultz thing. Yeah. Um. Uh. The the emotion I landed on today was like, I I'm, I wanted everyone to know that I'm not angry at Andrew. Like, angry at me for telling him this? No, is? no, I'm not angry at anyone. I'm not angry at anyone. I I I, I, I want to make sure everyone knows I'm not upset. Like, don't. There's no like. Andrew was really cool. He actually said to me after the episode, "We don't have to air this. We can edit that out." I'm so sorry. I don't think anyone expected. I should have said that when I was talking about it earlier. Yeah. Um, he was like, I don't think anyone expected it to be um, to be as bad as it was. I don't. I, I didn't. I, I didn't know. It was no be like one that. expected it to be that bad. And he was very cool at the end. And he like they were. I, they all felt horrible. They were all like, "I am really sorry." Like I didn't know that <laughs> they probably thought. Well, I thought it was just gonna be like a fun. Yeah, I don't think they realized I was going to get... I didn't realize I'd get that bad. So I don't want to make sure everyone knows I'm not mad at any of those guys. I'm yeah. cool. It was it was just a bizarre fucking thing to happen. So and I just want to make sure. Um, I'm trying to think of... I don't I don't know if anybody reminds me. Andrew Schultz. I'm kind of like Andrew a little bit. He's a large personality. He's a large personality. You're right. Big personality. Who's like that like loudest voice in the room type of guy? Donnell. That's a good one. I, I'm a lot like Donnell, but uh, not Donnell's a Donnell has, is a Donnell's a little more pensive than me. Yeah, he kind of knows how to zig and zag yeah. more than you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Donnell, um, Cat Williams. Oh my god, that's but he's actually super pensive. Yeah, you see him. In, you've seen him in, in interviews. It blows your mind that it's the same guy you saw on stage. Yeah. He's an incredible one-on-one interview. I would love to hang out with Cat Williams. But you can be introspective, too. Um, you don't remind me of any of these fucking guys. Let's see. None of those guys. No. Oh, Swartzen a little bit. There's a little bit of you, yeah. Swartzen. Yeah. yeah. If there's a party going on and the two of you walked in the room, I'd be like, oh. I wonder if I was like, I wonder this if, is, I, I want, this is a weird question, but I wonder if I had any similarities to Farley. Yeah, of course. You think? That's who everybody thinks of when they think of you. Yeah, a hundred percent. What is that? A list of all the comedians? Oh no, shit. Similar are. Oh, uh, what does the next page have? Because so far they're not really nailing it. But Farley is is the prototype Dove of Davidoff, your person no. of your personality. Dove Davidoff's a huge personality. Greg Warren is funny as fucking shit. Yeah, he's very funny, dude. He have you seen have you seen the Greg Warren clip where he talks about uh, wrestling? Or he talks about, have you, I, I, he has so many clips that are out right now that are so fucking funny. The, he, have you ever seen the one where he talks about <sighs> farmer's kids? No. He, Hang on. Can you just pull Greg Warren is so goddamn fucking funny. Here, wait. Here, hold on. Listen to this. This is a good bit. Okay. Uh, Greg, I hope you're cool with us playing here. Stand up. Okay. Too lazy to be a farmer. <laughs> I know that. Like, I mean, you say what you want about the farmers. They, they work. Like, they, they work. Just... Just look at what they make their kids do. You ever heard a farm kid talk about his chores? When I was a kid, if I said I did my chores, that meant I rolled rolled the garbage cans down the driveway (laughs) on Tuesday, and my brother did it on Thursday. And if if I didn't do my chores, I got grounded. If a farm kid doesn't do his chores, the bank forecloses (laughs) on the family's farm. The stakes are high over there, man. Dude. Where the field corn grows. Yeah. I think he did a whole fucking special on Farmer. He is so fucking funny, dude. Yeah, he's great. He's a St. Louis guy. Yeah. Yeah. There's so, man, I, 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 I. <coughs> That's what I got when I was, um, when I was, I did that South American tour I just finished. Oh, fuck. Yeah. That was wild. Take that and, for the next podcast. Tell yeah, me okay. about it. I'll tell, tell you what. I'm dying to hear about but that. But one thing that the guy pointed out is that the stand up world, is much smaller, right? Like we have, we don't, we take for granted. We have an industry here, yeah. meaning like there's infrastructure, there's, there's clubs, agents, man. Like it's all there's open mics. Like you can, if you really want to, you live in L.A., you really could get on twenty five shows this way if you were hustling to do it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like there's just, it's just all there. And I was talking to some of the guys down there in Argentina, and they were like, "Yeah, you know the thing about um, when you go to because like." 
they all know each other. Everyone who does stand up, they kind of know each other because yeah. it's smaller. They go. The thing that blows us away when we go to the states is just how many people are so good at stand. Like he goes, uh, that blows me away. He goes, I, I he goes, I stopped in. He was like, I was in New York, and I went to like the cellar and the stand. And he goes, there's just people who were, I couldn't believe how funny they were. And he's like, I, I'd never heard of them. And then I found out they've been doing stand up like. 20 you know 25 years and you're like this person's so good and he's like and then the next guy gets on stage and the next girl and you're just like this person he's like i couldn't believe how many funny comics there are like, I'm, just I'm blown away by how many fun I, like i get on i'll get on instagram at times and i'll be like sitting in my bunk going through and i'm I'll, i follow all of them i'm i came i was late to the game on ralph barbosa he's yeah fucking i mean like and then you look at like you go yeah, I just saw clips of that guy. The first time I'd seen him. He's really I, funny. I was I was with, I think, Mark Smalls, and he was like, you know who Ralph Barbosa is? And I was like, no. And I was like, and then I, I think I did a video where I was like, hold on. We were all talking, and everyone's like, dude, this guy's funny as shit. I was like, wouldn't you want to hear that? Wouldn't yeah. you want to hear that people are saying good things about you? Totally. So I did a video. I think this, I did a video, <laughs> and I was like, yo, I don't know who we're talking about right now, but I'm Googling you now. I go, Ralph Barbosa, everyone is sitting here saying how fucking hysterical you are. You should know that about that. So you, I hope you have a good day. We're all fucking comics, and we're all talking about you yeah. and how funny you are. And then I Googled him. I was like, okay, he's really fucking funny. Yeah, he's really funny. And and uh, and then and then I just I'll, I'll get in these things and I'll go. There's there's so many talented comedians. Yeah, I know. I've seen. I've there's. You just land on some of these sometimes, and you're like, holy shit. Uh, fucking Derek Derek Stroop. Derek Stroop fucking I, I think i've talked about him before he's fucking insanely funny i talk, i brought him on the road with me he did uh an, he did an arena with me i think and murdered in an arena really? Dude, funny as fucking shit i remember i remember have you ever heard shane gillis's special olympics joke so funny and i remember we were on the bus and my buddy my cousin andrew's like have you seen have you seen shane gillis perform in a while and i was like i don't i don't know I don't think so. And he goes, have you heard a Special Olympics joke? And I was like, it's no. So and we were crying laughing. Well, his special is like one of the only specials in the last five years that I I sat through. I finished. You know, a lot of them you kind of like watch yeah. like 15, 20 minutes of, which is very normal behavior. If you like, if you hear about, because like Netflix and YouTube, they, they, they're just data companies. They just study data. That's yeah. all they really get. They just study information. And that's why they... That's how they make their decisions. And they're like, most people turn these things off or stop at a certain point. Yeah. But that that special, I, I sat through the whole thing and I was just like laughing hysterically. My agent sent me, uh, <coughs> sent me, I, cause I told, I think Derek was like, how did you find out about me? I was like, I have no fucking idea. Yeah. I don't remember cause I get so much information yeah. thrown at me. And then I remember my agent one morning sent me a, a fucking link and he goes, it wasn't even posted. It was on like a Vimeo. He was like, you got to watch this guy. He's funny as shit. And I was laying in bed, and I watched his. He was like 27 minutes. I watched all of it. Do you know who else is special I watched that I fucking thought was hysterical? Oh, my God. And then let, don't let me forget to tell you about Ian Bag. Oh, my God. Okay, yeah. hold on. So Jackie Cation. Yeah, Jackie yeah. Jackie Cation's She's special. She's funny. I, it is so good. I was like, I love when people can tell. Like, she tells this joke about her dad and just explain, describing her dad, and I was crying laughing. All yeah. right. All right, now, Ian Bag. I take Ian Bag to Canada with me. He's like, he we do a podcast one time. He's like, and he was like, what? He we're talking about the arenas, the big shows. And I said, oh, they're fun as fuck. And he's like, I'd love to do one. I said, why don't you come with me? Come with me, and we'll do a, an arena run in, in Canada. And he goes, I've never been to Canada to do stand up. They don't. I, he doesn't go up there. I was like, oh, dude, hell yeah. So now, there's a there is a. I say this. I say this in all candidness. There is a confidence you get when you're when you've done so many shows in front of your fans, and you know how you know you know you can kill. Ian Bag gave me the most difficult weekend of my fucking yeah, life. I believe that, dude. He was doing crowd work in arenas and destroying. I mean, destroying. And then he'd go into material and have us crying. Now, Peter. Does, all Peter knows is the guys that have been on the road with me, right? Yeah. And me. That's it. He doesn't watch a lot of stand up. He doesn't know anything. He starts watching Ian Bag and he goes, he's like crying and hit. He's like, what is this guy? What is this guy? <laughs> he fucking murdered so hard. I was 
blown away. I mean, this guy, Ian Bag deserves a hundred thousand more followers and and to be doing theaters around the fucking country. He, he's, he's, he is so fucking funny. He goes, and I, we were talking about going to Australia, and I was like, I can't take you to Australia. I can't. I mean, I, I want to, but it's it. It Tom, it made it was. It's like you're unfollowable, dude. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's and I was like, I mean, I'm I I would. It was like I, I, I can't even put it in perspective. Is that the first night he went up? I went, ooh, he's really got to really put it on them. And then Peter and I were watching him from the side, and he's just so quick, so quick, and he's destroying the city, and he's and he's just and he's like tearing into the city, and he's fu- I mean, all fucking brand new material that he just wrote that day, and crowd work and working. He's working the arena like he's going like. To this side, these guys suck. You guys are good. Like he's and he's and then at the end of the week, you're like, you know, that was a blast, and I'll never do this again with you. And by uh, the way, and he was so much fun to be around. He's the right. Like he was, he was just always in a good mood. And he was like, he was like, uh, he started, he was busting Mans' balls, and he's like, ah, Mans, I understand why Shane Gillis doesn't like you. <laughs> it's just he's he's such a great fucking time. He's the best time. We um we did a, a club one time. It was just like a like a what's it called like a showcase night. Yeah. And he was before me. I was like, hey, dial it back. Okay. <laughs> and he was, he was like, well, now that you said that, you know, I won't. And I was like, God damn it. Cause he just goes, he's just like a flamethrower. It's just so intense. He had a joke about, uh, I don't want to do his joke, but he had a joke about if he had a daughter, what she'd look like. Yeah. And there was a line in there that I kept saying over and over the whole weekend. And by the way, the, the best part, the best part of everything is by the end of the week, everyone's talking like Ian. Yeah. yeah everybody Everyone is. in the West is talking mm, like hi, Ian. Mm, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. And then he, we worked out with us. We worked out. We were in end. We were in hockey arenas. And so Ian's fucking oh, he's huge. just jacking so, off the whole time. Oh, dude. Yeah. We hung out with the Winnipeg Jets. Yeah. Like, we, I mean, it was the coolest experience. Ian calls, Ian leaves his buddy as like a coach there. So Ian hits us up and is like, uh, I'm going to go say hi to my buddy. Do you guys want to work out here at the, you know, at the day? And yeah. we're like, yeah. So we go down. <laughs> we were there at the Winnipeg Jets. Yeah. We go down. We go down and work out. They fucking load us up with gear, like shirt, shirts, everything. I mean, they, they take care of us top to bottom. They fed us lunch. And then, and this isn't even where we were performing. And then the, and then they all had an event and all the Winnipeg Jets came in, uh, came and hung out backstage and they were fun as fuck. They're all young kids. It's funny. They're all young kids. And I'm like, I'm kind of like a larger dude than all of them. Yeah. So we're watching the Winnipeg Jets the next night. They're playing uh, Edmonton, I think. And one of the kids that was in the room is in a fist fight in the middle of the fucking thing. And Ian going, ah, we were drinking beers with that kid last night. And I was like, that's him. He goes, yeah, that's the kid. He's beating that guy's ass. <laughs> and we, uh, dude, we had so much Isn't fun. Isn't it crazy how young um, and like you can't really believe their age when you're around some of these pro athletes? Like when I did yeah. the, uh, when I did Green Bay, I did that, that arena. The thing there. Center. Yeah. And uh, all the Packers came. And we're backstage after the show, and they're all hanging out in the green room. And then half these guys, I'm like, "How old are you, man?" And they and they have this face. It's the kids. He's like, "I'm 24." I'm like, "You're 24." And then you just kind of looking them up and down. And you're like, "You play professional football? Like you can't like like you're a kid. Oh, you dude, just look like a little kid." Dude, when we did the when we did the the Super Bowl, yeah, Orlando Brown hit me up. And yeah, like, and he's like, "Hey, man." Is it cool if we come through? Zeus, yeah. Come by to back, backstage. He's a great dude. And I was like, yeah, of course. They come in. I, the First of all, it was like the scene from Revenge of the Nerds when the Omega Moves were walking in the door yeah, and yeah. I was booger. Yeah. They were just walking in and I'm like, one, two. And they're all the largest dudes. Yeah, huge. And then the best is one of the one of the big linemen goes, um, sir, would it be okay if I got a picture with you? Goes, sir. And then I realized, Leanne's, Leanne's there. She's like, babe, you're 30 years older than he is. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Like I'm old, I'm old. I'm, I was talking with fucking uh, Gabe Davis. I'm older than his parents. I think the, I think the crazy <laughs> part is some of them you can't believe how big they are. Some of them is you actually can't believe that they're not that big. You're like you play in the NFL. Like you're Christian not that McCaffrey, big. Chris, Christian McCaffrey was back there. Yeah, the coolest dude in the world. But like a regular size, like a regular size man. Yeah, like like I mean, he's not a like, freak he's of a, nature as an athlete. Freak, yeah, you touch yeah. his back. Yeah, and you you just feel. A huge yeah, it's lat. Like, yeah, it's like, like, it's like a, a protrusion. Yeah, I kept saying to him, I kept saying, "Do you think? Do you think I could catch you? Catch you? Like, like, 
If he if he ran away, like I, I was with, I was like, I was like in this room. Like if you gave me like like twenty minutes, do you think I could get grab you? And and Taylor Lewan's like, oh, there are men that train all year long to catch him and can't catch him, yeah, yeah. and they're the best athletes in the world. Yeah. He's like, you definitely can't catch him. No, but like. Uh, the those dudes and they're all so. By the way, I would cool. I would buy a ticket to watch you try to catch Christian McCaffrey. I would pay real money. And he was like, "Go, <laughs> just, just, just you'd have a heart attack, dude. I would have a heart attack. You he would, would get away from you so quickly. You would set to, after a while. You'd be like, oh, this is a bad idea. <laughs> this is a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, those uh those uh football players, man. Chris Godwin was at the show. Yeah, and uh and. I no, I don't know it. I'm I I don't know enough, but I know people, you know, and I yeah. know like, I mean, I, I, we obviously Gabe's a little different because you know Gabe's such a freak too. D- oh. He's a fucking freak. He's like the size of a tight end, and he's running the like the he's got incredible. He's running incredible routes he's, as a wide receiver. He is, and he is the most <coughs> regular cool dude such a regular in dude. the fucking world. He took us to. Um, you would have fucking loved this fucking. I'm telling you. I'm not, I I'm know I'm not supposed to say anything, but I have, I have the arena next year in Vegas. Yeah, I have it for the fucking Super Bowl. Yeah, I think I do. Okay, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna do a show. Okay, we're gonna do a show, like we did last year. But we're gonna put more comics on. Okay, we're gonna get Super Bowl tickets. We're gonna put more comics on. It's gonna be. We're gonna do a, a wish list of comics that are are football fans. And then we're gonna have everyone come through the green room like we did this year. That'd be awesome. It was it was so much fun, and it's so the shit you love. Like, yeah. uh, like I said, I don't know enough. I don't know a ton about football. I know enough about football, but like, there's a few names that stand out. Gabe's different because he's a, he was a fan of the show, and and I and so I got to watch him all year. He had such an amazing fucking year. Incredible. It was fun, and Pete's a Buffalo Bills fan, so like, but Chris Godwin comes up. He goes, you know, he's like super fucking polite. He's like. Uh, I just wanted to thank you for letting us come back to the show. We're, I'm friends with Gabe. I said, okay, cool. And he said something like, uh, he's with his wife. And and I was like, oh, yeah, let me introduce you to my wife. And I said, sure. I said, what's your name? He said, Chris. I said, I said, wait, where are you from? He goes, Tampa. I went, and I stopped. I go, what's your last name? <laughs> he goes, Godwin. I went, bro, I lost my fucking shit. I was like, because that's like one of the few dudes because I follow the box, one yeah. of the few dudes, and I was like, I was like, oh my god, oh my god, and my buddy Tony's son was there. Tony's son thought he was at, he's at the age where he's not into pussy yet. Yeah, it's sports Sport, for him. Yeah, yeah. And so I was a fucking dealer. I yeah. was like, he was sitting in the corner, like, is this Chris Godwin? And I go, Chris, can you get a picture with my buddy's son? And he's like, yeah. And he's like shaking. This is oh my god. I mean, if I was ever gonna have sex with a boy, that's how to do it. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. You- Let's wrap it up. All right. All right. I love you. Love you too. Bert and Tom, Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave. No scripts, a bit of booze, amateur partology. Dirty jokes, raunchy humor, no apologies. Here's what we call Two bears, one cave.